going to mention some of the people that I remember from being on the faculty at the University of Michigan and have you reflect on them. And the first name I'm going to mention is Edward Stashev. Well, he, he, as I think I mentioned earlier, he came to the uh, University of Michigan uh, with the same situation I did. He was he he received tenure, and he actually set up the uh, courses in television because he had been a a television director in New York. He also had had a job similar to mine with the with the New York Public Schools, but he had had a year or so of experience as a, a television director in New York, and he was the one who established um, the series of courses in, in, in uh, television that the d communication department offered. I think you told me that you initially, because of your background in radio, you, and you took a course from Dr. Stashev to learn about television. That's right. Tell me about that. Well, I, I took a course in television directing from Professor Stashev. <laughs> and uh, later on, I was sent as a Fulbright lecturer to the University of Durham, which is in the uh, northern part of England, uh, near Newcastle, and to the University of Hull, which is in Middle England, and I was using the uh, expertise that I had gathered in uh, Professor Stashev's courses in how to direct radio, uh, TV programs, and that's what I did in both those uh, universities. I called up one of the schools where I was going to be teaching the lady who she was the wife of the what they called the principal of the school, and she had a very high level English accent <laughs> <laughs> of the highest level. And, and I, I, I told my wife, Sally, you're going to have to learn to understand high level <laughs> English. And then on the other hand, I spent time in the uh, uh, in London and talking to uh, Cockneys whom I could scarcely understand <laughs> what they were saying. So there was a wide range of dialects and speech. Was the reverse yeah. true? Did they have a hard time understanding you? No, they didn't. never had a hard time yeah. understanding. Yeah. I would talk to a, a yeah. Cockney and he could understand everything I said. Henry Austin. Well, Henry Austin was a, an actor uh, he, he was he was uh, on Broadway when the army drafted him, and uh, then the navy came in and he had applied for a naval commission, and and he uh, they he the navy persuaded the army to let him go, and so he became a naval officer during World War II, and uh, then he was in the traveling company that was produced Oklahoma, he and his wife Carolyn, he, he played the part of Jed. Poor Jed is dead. That song. <laughs> he was Jed. And they traveled across the United States uh, for two years uh, in that company. And then he, he was hit with infinite, what they called infantile paralysis or polio as oh. we know it. And uh, he, he was very, very much handicapped, but he worked steadily and, and acquired most of the skills that he had before, but he knew that he could never, he, he had lost enough so that he couldn't, his beautiful bass baritone voice had been affected mm. enough so that he could not be a professional singer. So he came to the, uh, to the uh, University of Michigan as a student. He was one of my students. And then he did so well that we made him a member of the faculty, and so he became, he was a member of the faculty for many, many years. I remember him because, yeah. uh, I think I was telling you, in class, he could take his hand and put his palm down on the table and support himself and 
and be horizontal, parallel to the floor. Oh boy! So uh, he's he's but he definitely recovered from he, his paralysis. He, he really did. You you <laughs> couldn't tell. And I remember we'd go to the football games together, and the band would be playing, and Henry would be singing. I had said, Henry, you're drowning out the band. <laughs> <laughs> he still had a wonderful singing voice, and he and he was my uh, colleague then. Oh, he's a for for for. Quite a number of years. I'll, t I'll tell you another interesting story about him. He lived up on uh, Cedar Bend Drive. That's right. And on, at Halloween, he loved to scare the kids when they'd come up to trick or treat. Mm -hmm. Well, it got to the point of where the neighbors complained about him <laughs> because he was playing such a, uh, a, a real life role yeah. in frightening these children that they were yeah. Yeah. that they complained. Well, we used to eat lunch together and we'd play tricks on each other. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. what were some of those? Well, we'd, we'd wrap up uh, money, the money that, I, I forget how it became, but we, he'd wrap it up so you could scarcely get at it and, <laughs> and all kinds of different things. We, 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 oh. we took pleasure in figuring out new ways of, of being... Oh, uh, uh, of tricking him. I wish I could have been a little bird and yeah, had been right. present for yeah. that. Frank Beaver. Well, Frank Beaver came as a uh, as a student, I think, from North Carolina, and immediately we rec we all recognized that he was an outstanding student. And I remember I was uh, give, I was teaching a course in the history of broadcasting. That's probably the course you took. And uh, I lost my voice. <laughs> I just one of those things that happen every so often. And uh, so I worked it out so that I would whisper to Frank Beaver. I could whisper what I want to say, and then Frank Beaver would say it. <laughs> so he he took. Sort of took my place oh, for a while, and then he one? had uh, lots of other. He had a, a, a course in film. That was his uh, particular specialty, mm -hmm. and the uh, students flocked to that oh. uh, that course. And he was he was very popular, and eventually he became for four years. He was chairman of the department, and he has a very distinguished scholarly record. Of, Yes. of uh, production of articles and chairs of uh, important committees, yes. both at the college and uh, elsewhere. So he's, he was the outstanding student, really, mm -hmm. in, in the sense I'm that, not surprised. of what he accomplished. Dr. Willis will be celebrating in July of this year, 2013, his 100th birthday. So it's really a unique experience for me to be able to interview a centenarian, uh, especially someone who I have the utmost respect for. Dr. Willis was the department chair in the Department of Communication when I was a graduate student there in 1970. And uh, in fact, I had him as a professor. Uh, I think it was uh, your custom to teach at least one course uh, during your tenure.